This is the At Home with TT for the Mill Drive Home, reporting on the game that's just finished at the den. Mill 1, AFC Bournemouth 4. What a hammering that we were on the uh, wrong end of. Fully deserved to get beaten. And in fact, from the first 10 minutes, I could only see it going one way. And it's exactly how it could. It went very, very few times this season are we outclassed outplayed and outfought but we were today and sometimes you just got to hand it to the opposing team they were the better side and, and fully deserved to win the day started off pretty well considering that Billy Mitchell has just signed his new contract uh, a long contract at the den which is really good and really positive for us moving forward uh, obviously I'm without Zach Zach won't comment on that game um if he was allowed to swear, he probably would have done throughout it, but he's decided not to. Uh, thanks very much for the comments about his uh, birthday. Um, he really did appreciate them. Um, obviously, put your comments in what you think down below. I can't envisage they're going to be very positive. Um, I think we found out more about a couple of the players that you know were on the edge of the squad and have probably shown exactly why they shouldn't be playing next season. Um, we've got Watford away. Um, on Saturday, so to to play Bournemouth midweek and then Watford away is is too is difficult. But we're the only team other than Watford, funny enough, in the Championship that haven't suffered back to back defeats all season. So that could well come to an end on on Saturday. It's difficult. It's difficult to comment on. It's difficult to to talk about. But we'll go through it. I'll break it down. Obviously, we had Bartosz Biliakowski in goal, back three of Cooper, Pierce. And at George Evans, the, the central midfielder moving back, um, obviously because no Sean Hutchinson and Murray Wallace being out injured. Danny McNamara on the right, uh, Scott Malone on the left. Three midfielders of Kefton, Belden, Woods and, and Billy Mitchell just in front of them with Zahor and Jed Wallace up front. Like I said, first 10 minutes straight away, you just we were on the back foot. We couldn't get out. Zahor was... A, the thing is, with the front two, when we've had Bennett and Jed... They've been able to push the back line and, and been able to put them under pressure. Zahor wasn't running at all. He, he got the ball a couple of times, but in, in terms of pressing, it just was non-existent. It was like having Matt Smith there, which you wouldn't expect from Zahor because he's actually physically better than Smith, but just didn't do anything for us. Um, you know, Bournemouth should have, could, could have taken the lead in the in, in the 10th minute. You know, it was an offside goal. Dan Juma's played in uh, down the left. And it's a really good finish, but um, he was offside. It was about he was about a metre offside, although the replays weren't very um, from very good. You know, I follow was an absolutely disaster today. No commentary. So we went from that to, to Sky Sports. And Sky Sports, obviously, you don't get any replays. And the commentary was pretty poor on that as well. So you've just got to make the best of what, you know, the season's coming to an end, thankfully. Hopefully, you know, we'll all be back in, in the ground next year and be able to get behind behind the boys and be able to, to, you know, make a difference in games. And I think it would have made a difference today. You know, just, you know, we looked a little bit too lethargic. Uh, straight after the offside goal for Bournemouth, funny enough, we got down the other end. The Jed Wallace cross into Sahor. Sahor kind of, it bubbled ar around a little bit and he hit it and it was, you know, well wide. We had so few chances today. It was, it was, um, was untrue. You know, 15th minute, it was woeful from Billings because Evans has, Sorry, not woeful from Billings. It was woeful from us. Woeful defending. Uh, Billings, Billings puts uh, Bournemouth one nil up. The sixteen million. You know, I've put on Twitter about uh, Bournemouth players, uh, Bournemouth squad, about how much they are. We're looking seventy-eight million pounds, and normally we can upset that. Normally we battle against that. Uh, today it wasn't too much, but Billings is a very expensive player. Wouldn't have mattered uh, how expensive we was because anyone, anybody would have been able to score. You know, Pierce goes up for a header with Solanke. He kind of half gets it. It's a terrible header from Pierce. He just kind of flicks it down. Um, Evans goes to kick it and, and miss kicks it. it. It falls to Solanke, who plays in Billings. And Billings does a lovely little chip finish to put them 1-0 up. And like I said, it was fully deserved from there. It, you know, it's attack after attack after attack. Um, Pierce again beaten in the air. Uh, and, and a header well set. You know, it's a cross. Pierce beaten in the air by a cook rises at the back post and... Gets a shot on uh, a header on target and Bart saves well. Then again, you know, all, all chances before they even take get the second. The corner, you know, run run uh, corner into the near post. Solanke gets in front of um, the defender. I think it was Maloney got in front of and, and flicks it towards Bart again. That saves. They then take the lead. They then take the second. What well, second second goal, which is awful defending. 
Route 1 football. Forget about the fact that Bournemouth played some really good football today. They scored with a, you know, Begovic gets the ball in his hands. It's a really good kick out. Bends towards uh, Dan Juma, who just runs in on it. You know, uh, Evans is beaten for pace. Pierce can't get across. Uh, Dan Juma holds onto the ball really well and then slots it into the bottom right hand corner. I thought it was a bit of a bobbled finish, but actually seeing it again, I think it was. Um, Thinking about it again, I, I think it actually was a decent finish. The fact that he's held on to it so long. Then we didn't do anything again for about 20 minutes. Just before half-time, Brooks cuts in and you're thinking, uh, hopefully someone's going to tackle him. He drifts past Pierce easily, uh, you know, far too easily. You know, Pierce has shown that he's really not cut out for the championship anymore. Him and Zahor, for me, are the, the two standout Poor performances, although it's very difficult to give anyone a, a, a good rating because, uh, you know, I couldn't, I, I don't think I'll give anyone over three or four out of ten. But um, he's drifted in and Bart's wrong footed out of position, really, because the ball goes in quite close to the middle of the goal. And, and it's a decent hit shot, but it's not a fantastic shot. And it's gone into the back of the net to put on three nil up again. You, could, you couldn't argue it. The fact that it was only 3-0 was the only thing that we were lucky about. Second half starts. Obviously, Pierce then goes off. And um, Mahoney comes on. Made a bit of a difference. First 10 minutes, I felt that we actually tried to get involved and try and make a bit of a match of it. Obviously, we score from a like, ball lumped into the box. The ball's badly defended by Bournemouth, in fact, and, and falls to Jed Wallace, who finishes well into the into the bottom right to make it 3-1. Uh, uh, again, completely out of the flow of the of the actual game. Um, and then, we get, again, we sit back. A, a good run down the left. A, a, a ball into... To be fair, for, it's dreadful from start to finish, and it summed it up. You know, the fact that they didn't score was, was the only good thing. But Billy and, and Scott Malone bump into each other in the middle. The ball drops around. Then Kefton Bell completely misses the ball. It then, you know, the ball's played towards Jed, who doesn't come to the ball. It, I think it was Brooks that nips in, does well, gets hold of the ball, crosses it to Solanke, who's two yards out and manages to, to miss it. It was comical all round, the fact that Solanke's missed it from two yards out. But it's just summed up our game, that, that 20 seconds of play. Just we weren't at the races today. And... Again, it's, you, you cannot afford... You know, we can't afford to come play like that against Rotherham and Wickham with the squad size we've got. But to do it against, you know, a team that's full of quality players and, and, and expensive talent, you're going to get absolutely punished. And, and the, the interplay for the fourth goal really did sum it up. Again, you you want a meal player to put a tackle in, but the, the one-two passing was really, really good between... Um, I think it was between Solanke and Billings... Billings put, uh, you know, one, two on the edge of the box. Billings put in Solanke, who just calmly tucked it into the bottom right-hand corner to, to make it 4-1. We did nearly get a goal. Billy Mitchell, ironically, after signing his contract, back heels it and, and it's cleared off the line. And then, you know, Bournemouth hit the post in the 78th minute. And it's a game where I probably, you know, I shouldn't really be doing a drive home. I don't think anybody's going to be watching it. And if I get any Bournemouth... Supporters watching it, it's only going to be negative comments because they beat us 4-1. And apparently on Twitter, I was crying. But um, <laughs> I weren't crying. Although it's just difficult to watch your team get absolutely outclassed, outplayed. And... But it's Millwall. We'll go again. You know, we'll go again next Saturday. You Put your comments in what you think. Three o'clock kickoff on Saturday against Watford. Um, well, as always, I appreciate the support for the channel. We'll have probably, hopefully, have Zach back. On Saturday, only one way to finish it, summed up by today. No one likes us. We don't care.